What's up, Generation Church? How we doing today? Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you guys? Well, we want to welcome you to Generation Church this weekend. If you're new to the family, we want to be the first to say welcome home to our church family online. So glad you guys have tuned in today. And we're going to finish up the series, I Choose You. And so uh, we get to do it together, which is, is my favorite. And uh, so I hope you guys that uh, are here, you enjoy uh, just what God has to say to you about relationships and families and um, marriage, future marriage. Uh, and so I, I believe that as we close out the series today, that God is just going to do something uh, special in your life and in your relationships. Awesome. Well, you know, this content that we have put together, it, 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 if you're here today and you're like, oh, great, a series on marriage, really? I came out and it's gray outside. I could be watching movies right now. Um, if that is you, I want you to know that this, this message is not, it's not just for married people. It's for everyone. Um, single, married, widowed, divorced, teenagers, students, like, because really this content and, and what we're going to be learning today, either A, it's for your future, B, it's for your present, um, but it's always, and the content is always about personal responsibility. And regardless of who you are, where you are, what your relationship status is, um, it is for you. And so my hope is that you come away today learning something valuable that is going to be a seed that invests in your family in the future. So today on week four, we're going to talk about family values and family mission. And the reality is at whatever age or stage you are in in life, you're always thinking about, okay, I wonder how this is going to play out. Like when you're, you know, in school, you're thinking, who am I going to date? Who am I going to marry? And, you know, what is that going to look like? And, and, and girls, you know, you planned your, your wedding day from eight years old. You knew what dress and flowers and cake and all that. Guys, you, you still don't even know what happened at your wedding. And... <laughs> And so whether you're single or married or divorced or widowed, we're all thinking about the future. Yeah. And so what we're going to talk about today, regardless of where you are in your relationships, is, is really about establishing your family vision and values and, and, and the mission. And you don't have to wonder. You don't have to wonder what it's going to look like in the future because God has given you the ability to follow his word and to begin to design a mission that you, you and your family uh, can live out and, and be a part of. And, um, and, and so as you, you do this, there's a, a map that emerges. Uh, it, it's a, it's a, a path, a direction for your life so that where you see yourself in the future, you actually have the ability uh, to get to. In Proverbs 29 and verse 17, uh, the scripture says this. It says, to discipline your children and they will give you peace of mind and will make your heart glad. But when people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. Turn to your neighbor and say, run wild. Run wild. They run wild, but whoever obeys the law is joyful. So your family values and, and family mission, they are a choice. You have to, to choose to allow divine direction and guidance uh, to, to play into your life. And you've probably seen that your business that uh, you work for, or maybe if you're an entrepreneur that you started, the company that you've been a part of, they, they all have defined their values right. and vision. So if, if the place that you work has defined it, you got to define it for your family because your family is more important than anything else. So we're going to talk about that today. And, and if you have small kids, you, it's like running a business. I mean, in order to survive every single day, like you have to have routine structure. I feel like the CEO of Hudson and Ethan Incorporated. Yes, exactly. By um, the way, if, if you don't like for our son, this is probably true for your kids. If you don't have a plan for Hudson, he has a plan for you. That's true. Um, you know, okay, so have you guys ever been in, a, in somebody's home, um, and I've sort of talked about this already, but have you ever been in somebody's home and you're just like, I like this. Like, I, 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 they're awesome. Or like there's people, maybe it's an aunt and uncle, maybe it's yourself, maybe it's, it's some extended family member that you've known them for a really long time. You've known them for like two or three decades. And at the end of that two or three decades, you know, like you, you knew them when they were younger and now you know them when they're older and you're like, wow, like they're amazing. Their kids are awesome. You know, they're, they're maybe in their 60s or 70s and they're just happy. And they, there's, there's like a lot that, about their life that, man, I hope I'm them when I grow up, right? That didn't happen by accident. Right. 
that didn't happen through just sort of like just you know, every single day, just kind of, you know, trying to avoid the landmines and, and just, you know, get by. That definitely had some intentionality around it. And the intentionality comes through, um, or, or through with intentionality, you can define the culture in your home. You can define the, the, the values and the um, mission of your family. And that might sound like, some kind of like really big question mark. Like, Melissa, we're not gonna go mission. Like, we're not gonna go move to like Africa. Like, that's not for us, you know. Um, and th that's okay because that's not what mission is about. God has a mission for your family, um, something that he has called you guys to be um, that is for you. And it's not uh, without the ability to be accomplished. It is, um, it is possible. But it's only going to be possible through putting language around those, those mission, vision, and values. And it's going to be doing some soul searching, some digging to find out um, who are we? Like, like what, do, what do we really value? What are we really about? And later on in the message, we're going to share our family values and our family mission. Yeah. So, you know, when we talk about something like this, I don't want to just give you the what or the how without helping articulate or unpack for you the why. Yeah. Now, for the ladies in the room, you're probably like, yes, mission, values, give me a poster board and some markers. And the men are like, uh, what? <laughs> and we're drooling and we're like, I, I don't need a mission. I got a mission to get up and go to work. I'm a human ATM, you know? Um, <laughs> any men feel like a human ATM? Like just, you just pop out $20 bills all the time? Yeah. Um, so I, if I can just encourage the guys and maybe just unpack the why a little bit for you, uh, it, it'll help you get on board with this. You know, this is the, the, the values and the vision and mission of your family. Um, it's the framework and foundation on which you build your life. And some of this is already there. You just need to put some language around it, articulate it for yourselves. Uh, some of you already have phrases and things that you say in your family. Like my mom always, we always used to say, obedience is better than sacrifice, Benjamin. And she would say, patience is a virtue. And she would say, no matter what you do or wherever you go, I will always find out what you did bad. <laughs> and what's funny about that is, mom, if you're watching today, is 46 years later, um, I get to tell all the bad stories, but I'm a pastor now and I'm an adult, so you can't spank me. <laughs> but she does find out it was true. So you probably already have language that's there. You, you just need to organize it and, and, and it becomes a foundation and a framework. If you don't organize what you're building, then you're going to have walls all over the place yeah. and windows where they don't belong and doors that lead to nowhere in your family. And, and you may find that you've built a family that is not on a solid foundation. And, and when stress comes, like I, I see families that were completely wrecked through COVID. And, and if you've been wrecked through COVID, I don't want you to feel um, condemned by that. I want you to look at it and say, okay, I, I, this next go around, I need to build on a solid foundation. But when things happen like that, if your foundation of your family is not built on God, then you, you find out that things fall apart. And so today, guys, if I can just help you, the why behind this is that this is the foundation and framework of, of what, you're, what you're building. It's your legacy. When you take your last breath, the only thing you have left are the people, the kids that you brought into this world and the family that's left. But nobody cares about your career. They care about the legacy of your family. You know, as you're exploring your family values, if you, if you choose to take on this exercise as a family and go, okay, who are we? What are we here for? And what are we going to do as a family unit? Um, you have to explore those values and you're going to find out that you and your spouse value different things. Yeah. And um, you're going to have to be willing to adopt values that matter to your spouse. So you have to, um, you don't become, you can't become a different person. You're still you. Um, you. You still have the things that you value individually, but there's this recognition of things that are really important to you. So 
think about yourself for a second, you know, just, just think about the things that are important to you. You know, maybe for one of you, it's like orderliness and that orderliness isn't just like the shoes in your closet. It extends to like your finances and, and, and other things that affect your family. If, if orderliness is important to you and, and your spouse, it's not important to them. Well, the spouse that's that it's not important to is going to have to have some recognition of the importance um, to that spouse and allow the passion and the emotion and the pain of a lack of orderliness impact them in a way that motivates you to change. And you don't have to change to become them. You can't do that. You can't become a different person. But but you, you do need to... Um, through that recognition, making their pain your pain, hopefully it, 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 it helps you at least support the value that they have. Yeah, some of the value is already there. You need to put language around them. Some of them are going to come from one spouse or the other. Uh, some of them are aspirational. Like you, you want to be something that you're not quite yet there. But as it relates to the shared value, this is such an important part because when you bring two people who have led separate lives together, if the value system doesn't coalesce together, then there is going to be contention there. And uh, you just you have to, to see the bigger picture in a relationship. And one of the things for us that was a shared value is we don't drink alcohol at all. Zero, zip, nada, zilch, at all. And Not even kombucha. No, I do drink some kombucha. <laughs> And, and there's no judgment if you do. We actually don't not drink alcohol um, due to, you know, maybe like biblical, um, you know, mandates or anything. You could really make a case biblically either way. And obviously the goal in that would be moderation. Um, but we don't drink alcohol because I actually grew up in an alcoholic home. And uh, when Ben and I were dating, um, you know, he sort of drank casually, and it, I was at a point in my life where I understood that alcohol could not really be part of, of my life, my fun, my social circles, and that type of thing. And, um, and it really sort of became this moment in our relationship where we really had to decide, I mean, you know, socially drinking is, is, is a, can be a huge part of life, you know, and I'm, I'm certainly not, you know, you know, like celebrating that as like, that should not be a reason why you do or don't get married, but it was so important to me. Um, and I communicated it like upfront, I cannot marry someone who drinks alcohol even socially. And, um, and I had to adopt that. I had to share that value. And, you know, I grew up differently. You know, my dad used to make wine in our basement. And uh, it's, he, he, Dad, I know you're watching. Actually. He still does. And uh, his, his thing was it makes him feel closer to Jesus because <laughs> Jesus turned water into wine. And, um, and, Dad, I'm not sure that what you've made is wine. It's more like brandy, but um, moonshine even. Um, but I, I just like grew. We call it wine. Yeah, we call but it it's wine. Really moonshine. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Moving on. Moving on. Yes. Thank yeah. You when mind. you can get inebriated by just smelling it, it's it's got some content, and. Um, and so I just grew up differently. So I had, I had to, to figure out like, okay, I, am I going to share this value? Because otherwise it's going to be contentious. And, and I got to tell you, like there, there were some times where I really had to see the bigger picture and be committed to her above things that were just different for me. And she had to do, we'll talk about it in a minute. She had to do some of the same things and adopt some shared values that were important to me. But you know, when I was in the pharmaceutical industry in the research world, all, all you do is drink there. And you know, I, I would go and spend, you you know, eight weeks away at sales meetings and it was, you know, you go learn about a new product that we're going to sell in the morning and then you go get inebriated all night long and forget everything that you learned. And, and I was the only one that didn't drink out of all of that. And so these were very um, calculated and committed decisions that I made because the values of our family were more important than my individual values. That's so good. The other thing that's important for this is Sometimes your spouse may have a value that is based on something that needs to be broken in the family line. Yeah. In Exodus 20 and verse 5, it says that the sins of the parents are visited to the children and the children's children, to the third and even the fourth generation. And so if you look at Melissa's family, her dad died of alcoholism. Both of her parents are deceased. Both of her brothers are addicted to substances and alcohol. And so part of Melissa's value in that was not just because it was painful to watch how she grew up, but she's breaking a generational curse. And 
And so, um, I wasn't sure if I was supposed to pick up there. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, I had to adopt some values that, that weren't necessarily natural to me as well. And, um, you know, Ben, uh, you know, given how I grew up, you know, we did not have a lot and, and we moved around a lot and, and we never um, owned a home. And I, I observed, you know, um, not great financial um, habits and values and that type of thing. And so um, Ben, on the other hand, is um, a saver like, uh, I don't even know. I wish I could think of something funny to describe how much of a saver Ben is. But he can save. He he can turn nothing into something. Um, it's unbelievable, actually. It's really funny, and we laugh about it a lot of times because I'm just like, how do you do this? I have no idea. Um, and so, you know, one of the values that I had to adopt was frugality, order. I'm a natural spender, and there's nothing wrong with being a natural spender um, in. At moderation, you know, I think a lot of times when we have different categories that we fall into, we can see as w one as better than the other. And that's not necessarily true. A, a spender is not worse than a saver. A saver is not worse than a spender or better than a spender. Um, I actually need to learn how to spend a little bit from Melissa, <laughs> which I did. I, I loosened up a little bit. Yes. Okay. If you think that Ben ever looks like, you know, semi good, you can thank me. Okay. <laughs> You know, my mother dressed me growing up, and now my wife does, so. <laughs> um, anyhow, but I had to learn some frugality, and Ben, um, uh, about seven or eight years ago, nine years ago now, Ben um, had a desire to build a house. His parents had built a house, um, really kind of themselves, and so he really wanted to build a house, and I really could not see that. I, I had no paradigm for that. And the values that it would take to do something like that, especially given you know, where we were at that time, where it was gonna take frugality, it was gonna take organization, it was gonna take order, it was gonna take more saving than spending. And, um, and we came to a moment where I, I really recognized that. And I recognized that the, the pain that Ben had around the values and the mission really to do this, um, I, it was, it, you know, it was unlikely that it was going to be able to be accomplished because, um, you know, I had not yet recognized of the J Crew account. Uh, <laughs> I had not yet recognized um, how important Target. his personal values are. <laughs> TJ Maxx, um, <laughs> Home Goods, um, Holla. <laughs> and, but when I did, when I recognized that my lack of recognition of, of his needs around his values, I, when it impacted me, man, I adopted those values and, and we were able to accomplish that goal. So, yes. And then she turned it on and she shamed me in the act of stewardship. And there was a few, a while there, I was like, oh, you, you, you gotta stop. <laughs> like, you gotta slow down just a little bit. I, I have, I, we need to go out to dinner. And um, hey, I went through a phase where I would not buy hand soap. If you came to my house, you had to wash your hands with a bar of soap. Um, I wouldn't buy candles. I wouldn't buy anything because I was so motivated um, by that value and that mission that I just, I was not going to be stopped. And so, um, yes. Yeah. So, you know, when we're talking about putting language to our values, whether they're aspirational, which our stewardship value was an aspirational value, uh, or the things that already exist, and, and we, we start to unpack this and, and build around it and, and talk about taking on another person's value as your own and building that for your family, it, it's difficult to do. I mean, you have to set your own pride down. You have to set your yeah. own um, desires down. And, and you have to look at the bigger picture for what you're trying to build uh, and, and make those choices. And I think that's uh, the beauty of the book is, is that so much of this is you, you choose this. Like, you don't have to do any of this. Right. But when you choose to make these decisions, the outcome is, is absolutely tremendous. And, um, and so in order to be able to choose a value that's not your own and to share that with your spouse, you have to have some trust. You have to be able to, to look at that person and, and, and understand why it is important to them. And I would encourage you to take some time and do that. Once I understood why drinking, uh, not socially drinking, was important to Melissa, it was easy to adopt that. When I was sitting on the couch going over the budget one day, and I wasn't even talking to her, and I just said, we're never going to be able to build this house. And she heard that, 
that, that why, that released in her the ability to say, okay, all right, I'm going to get on board with this. And so in your, your quest for family values and, and a family mission, you have to understand this, that understanding releases submission. Understanding releases submission. When you understand the why, it's easy. So take the time to understand why different things are important to each of you. And when you get that, you'll be able to, um, to move forward. The, the same thing with your kids. When your kids understand why we treat people the way we treat people, when your kids understand why we don't leave stuff laying around the house, when your kids understand why you weren't born in a barn, we're not air conditioning all of South Florida, when your kids understand all, all of the things that we say to them over and over and over and over again, the, it, something transitional happens. Your family values turn f- from rules, they, they turn into trust. It turns from rules to trust when you have articulated it. See, when you can come back to your children and say, listen, I know that, that I told you we don't do this as a family, and this is why, all of a sudden that, that understanding for your kids creates trust around that, that value. And they'll adopt it much more easily. If you're just running around yelling rules at, at your family, they're not going to pick it up. They're actually going to rebel to that. And so it's so important that you take the time to, to talk it out. You know, your family values give a vehicle. Um, give, I'm sorry. Your family values give you a vehicle, and your family mission gives you the direction. Um, you know, the values are, are, are really the car. It's the engine. It's the, it's the forward progress because... If, if you adopt values, let's say, for example, you know, one of our values is, is treating each other with kindness and respect. And um, one of the ways that we parent Hudson is when he starts, you know, like getting very like demanding or, you know, as three and four year olds do, um, we. In- After we exercise the demons. <laughs> just, just joking. We. Um, We've now started addressing it less as like, you're not gonna act like that, and more um, as, hey buddy, in our family, in this home, we treat each other respectfully. And that's not a respectful way to speak to one another. And that's a lot different than like, you better change your attitude and you know, all the Stop things. Stop your that- crying before I give you something to cry about. <laughs> um, Anybody relate to that phrase? You know, a myriad of others that, you know, and, and not that we haven't said those occasionally. We, sometimes we have, but we're trying to make it more value-based and less, you know, situational. And um, so, so every time we do that, every time we employ that value, it's, it's the engine that, that takes one step forward, the next step forward, the next step forward. You know, even if you don't have kids, I know we're giving a lot of kids examples, um, the choices that you make in treating one another in your marriage or in your future marriage um, will propel you toward the places that you really want to go. That's what values do. It propels you to the place that you really want to go. If you want a home that is marked by harmony, then you have to make harmonious choices day after day after day when you want to make less than (laughs) harmonious choices. And so that's how values are the vehicle. That's how they're the engine that drives you forward. A harmonious home is the, is the map. That's the mission. That's the destination. And so, um, so that value drives you that direction, and, and that's how you, you ultimately know where you're going. You know, um, stop crying, be, or I'm going to give you something to cry about. That isn't taking you anywhere. It's just, it's just shutting down the situation, but without direction. So Psalm 145 verses 4 and 5 says this, Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. I will meditate on your majestic, glorious splendor and your wonderful miracles. When it says let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts, what the psalmist is articulating there is we're conveying values from one generation to the next. And as we convey those values and we proclaim what God has done, what's important to us, we meditate on them. His glorious splendor and wonderful miracles are a part of that. That is the result of that. 
And so values are the, the vehicle. You, you communicate those from parents to kids and, and so on and so forth. And they start to move the ball forward. This morning, I, I was here doing just a quick sound check with everybody. And, and Jim, uh, who's one of our coaches here at, at the church, he gave uh, Hudson and um, Miles, uh, the Stevens kids, Miles and Maverick, and um, um, Matt Max gave them the little invite cards that are on your seat. And so I walk out and I see these boys, they're all out there just putting those, those seats, those cards in the seats. They're serving you. And so when the huddle started and, and Pastor Mike is in there talking about what he's, you know, all the things that are going on while we're waiting for people to get there, I pulled Hudson aside and I said, hey man, really proud of you. I'm really proud to see you taking those cards and putting them on the seat. You know what that is? That's being a servant. And I said, you know, the Bible tells us Jesus said this, that those who serve are the greatest. So what you did today is great, and it's building character. And I told him, I said, there are going to be people that pick up the card that you placed, and they're going to invite somebody to church. And that person is going to come to church, and they're going to meet Jesus. And that person is going to start a journey with God, and they're going to get baptized, because baptism is everything to Hudson. <laughs> I feel like I have birthed, Melissa has birthed John the Baptist into the world. For the 21st century. This yeah. is no joke. Andy, Andy who, who leads our baptism team, has influenced my son tremendously. Yeah. Yeah. And so these values and these, these moments, they, they, they take your family somewhere. They're so important. My son noticed when, when Andy changed from I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And he was like, Dad, what's the Holy Ghost? And I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you sometime else, buddy. But, but the, these moments are, are so vital. And they actually produce forward momentum for you and your family. So the question we want to ask today is, what are you building? What are you building? Because... Whether you realize it or not, you are building something. My parents very unintentionally, very, you know, haphazardly, they were built, they built something. Um, you know, and, and, and how that can be, um, you know, quantified and qualified and that type of thing is for another day, but, but they, they still built something. You're building something whether you realize it or not, so why not do it with intention? The scripture tells us in Proverbs chapter 14, uh, verse 1, it, 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 this is really for everyone, man and woman, um, but it says a wise, a wise person, a wise woman builds her home. But a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. And so um, a, a wise person is always building. What choices are you making to build your family? What values are you going to define and put in place for your kids and for your, the, your future kids or your future spouse that is going to help build your home? And I wanted to say this because, you know, you, you, there are many people here who have come to every single week of this series or, um, and you've yet to really kind of employ um, – some of, the, some of the things that you've heard, some of the lessons that we've shared. Um, and you're sort of like, you know, this sounds good, and, you know, we'll see, and, you know, maybe we'll adopt some of this. Even if you haven't adopted one thing, one thing, you're still, you know, maybe your communication isn't as great as it could be, or you still are carrying some bad habits, and, you know, you're not treating your spouse as good as you could. Um, that's okay. Perhaps that what we're talking about today is not necessarily in sequential order. You could start with what we're talking about today and perhaps it would help reverse engineer some of the changes that you need to make. Um, that by, by defining the end and working from the end, you know, from the beginning, you know, it might, it might help make some of the choices for you um, that you've yet to be able to make. So. So as we unpack some of these practical steps, you know, the question, what are you building and how are you building it? The second thing is this, is, is I want to encourage you, don't let life happen to you. Don't just let it happen to you. Don't let your family just develop the, you know, at happenstance. Be intentional with that and take the time to, to really uh, have the conversation with your spouse and, and design the family that, that you want to see. Be intentional, men. Sign up for Emerge. Uh, you know, I, I come on, yeah. yeah. 
I, I brought my son and I'll bring Ethan to, to emerge before he knew what was going on. Then he got too old for that. He was kind of crazy and I couldn't keep up with him. But now that he's turning four, um, he wants to come. And so he's, he's coming to emerge this Friday. And, um, and, and so I went on and I signed up and I went ahead and signed him up as well. And I'm intentional with that. I'm not pushing it on him but I'm intentional to um, create the values, why it's important, why being a part of, of men's ministry is important. And he sees that, and now he wants it for himself. And so the scripture says in Psalm 78, we will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and his wonders that he has done. He has decreed statutes or, or values for Jacob and established the law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach their children so that the next generation would know them, even the children yet to be born. And they in turn would tell their children and they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. And then the third thing, as we unpack the, the, the how to part of this is to, to build your marriage and your family on a solid foundation yeah. and you know, there's so much out there. You can Instagram anything and everything. You can get recipes. You can get workout routines. You can get uh, information on, on family and values. You can Google search every, anything that you want out there. And there are a million different ways to articulate values around your family. And some of them can be very corporate driven. Some of them can be very success driven. Some of them can be, uh, you know, very personal or socially driven. But if you'll build the family values and the mission for your family off of the basis of the Bible, then you're building it on a solid foundation. Because yeah. if you just build it off of corporate values, like my, my mom used to say, you're going to go to college. I had no choice. You're going to go to college. You're going to go to college. You're going to go to college. That was a value. But just going to college didn't make me the man that I am today. Yeah, that's it's a portion of it, but really the spiritual development is, is what made me the person that I am today. And, and I'm not saying that you're, you're making your kids into pastors. Yeah. I'm saying you're making your kids into Jesus followers, world changers, people who make a difference in a doctor's office, in a, a construction environment, in a law office, wherever you are. But, but do this in an intentional, build it on the solid foundation. Luke 6, I will show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching and follows it. It's like a person building a house who digs down deep and lays the foundation on solid rock. And Jesus is that solid rock. Melissa, talk to us a little bit about mission. You know, it's not enough to, to just do what your parents did. You know, sometimes we have to wipe the slate clean, especially if we did not grow up with a, with a biblically-based lifestyle. Um, and so if that's you, you know, I have a couple of questions for you around your family mission. Um, when you're 85 years old and you look back over your life, what did you do and what did you build? Did you choose growth over comfort? cannot accomplish mission by just status quo? Did you create an example worth following? Did you steward the resources that were given to you to manage? Did you pass on a legacy of wisdom, knowledge, and financial resources for the next generation? And did you create a shelter of love and unity? And most of all, did you make a difference for the name of Jesus? Amen. It's important. So here's just some practical as we, we wind this up, some practical steps for you. The first thing to do is, is get together and have a conversation and talk about what's important to you and start to write down the values. And, and you'll be able to put language around what's there. It'll take you some time. It's actually pretty difficult because the part of your brain that is values driven versus the part of your brain that is language driven are two separate sides of the brain. So you feel things that are hard to put language around, but if you'll take time to put language around what you feel and what is important to you, you'll begin to build a foundation. And those values, as you do them, I would encourage you to do them based on scripture, based on the kingdom of God. You'll find you'll get four corners of those values and, and you'll start to articulate the corners of the house of, of the, the, the family that you're building. And when you get to that place and you've determined those values, which are the vehicle, then you can start to say, now, what are we going to do with that? What mission are we going to accomplish? How are we going to impact the world? What are we going to do as a family? Who, who are we? I pray this over our boys every single night that you were made for big things and that we will do something big for the kingdom of God as a family. I pray that for them every single night. 
It, because we have a, a destination in mind. We know what our mission is and, and where we're going. So I encourage you to, to do that and put language around the mission. What, what do you want to accomplish? What do you want to be? What type of family legacy are you building? What kind of atmosphere are you building towards? What, what do you want to see your kids accomplish? Not just in the corporate world, but who do you want to see them become? That is the important part of this. And so once we started doing that, we decided every year we were going to take a day and we get a babysitter and we go rent office space. And every single year in between Christmas and New Year, we go through and we detail out last year's goals and we talk about how we did, where we failed. We put a big red X on what we didn't do so well on and a big green check mark on what we did great on. And, and we analyze what we did, and then we say, okay, what do we want to accomplish next year? And we do that for marriage, our relationship, our family, our finances. Yeah. And, and it's amazing to watch. When we started doing that, like just, I'll just take our retirement savings. When we started doing that, our retirement uh, began to multiply. And it had been going for years and years and years and years and years. As soon as we got intentional and started setting those goals, it, it, was, it was honestly supernatural. And the same thing, we see that in, in all the areas of, of our family life. And so I would encourage you to start doing some of those practical steps. And then here's the last verse. In Deuteronomy 6 and, and verse 6, it says that you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed and when you're getting up. And when... The Holy Spirit was inspiring this verse to be written by the hands of men. What he was saying is, get a family vision, get a mission, and don't stop communicating it. Every single day, let the words that you've written down be a part of your family. And in this verse in, in Deuteronomy, literally, it is in context of, of what they called a phylactery. It was the, the law of God that was written down and kept in a box on the forehead of the priest's. And it was kept on the forehead of the priest so that the vision and the mission and the values were in front of their eyes all the time. And your family can't follow that value or that mission if you haven't written it down, if you haven't articulated it. So get a poster board or whatever you need to do and, and write it down and, and make it happen. And just be practical with it.